What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about problem solving. One of the biggest mistakes I think most beginners make is jumping right into the tools because that's all they really know, right? They know how to use SQL, they know how to use Excel, they know how to use Python or Power BI or whatever it is. So that's what they're comfortable with. And so what they do is when they hear a problem, they go right to the tool. They don't really dive into the problem itself. They go straight to how can I solve this with the tool that I know? And to me, this absolutely makes sense. And I know that I made this same mistake when I first started out as a data analyst many years ago. In this video, we're gonna cover two things. The first thing is having an analytical mindset. Now, that doesn't mean you have to think like a data analyst. It just means thinking in an analytical way to break down problems, to actually solve problems better. The second thing that we're gonna do is look at the problem solving life cycle because there is kind of a structured path to problem solving if you really think about it. Let's look first at an analytical mindset. Now, some people are born this way and I know people who are born just, that's how their brain works. I was not one of those people. I promise you, when I first started in analytics and being a data analyst, I didn't understand how to think at all. I was like, I don't understand this problem. This does not make sense to me. So I was definitely a person who just kind of learned this over time. And really the best way to think about an analytical mindset is to think like a detective. You're treating a problem like it is a mystery, like it's something you need to solve, like a puzzle. And you're putting all the pieces together and you're looking at everything that you have and then you're trying to solve it afterwards. Some of the best people I've worked with, data engineers, software engineers, you know, data analysts, data scientists, this is how they think. They may run into an issue or get some really strange request and they have to really dig in and they have to really figure out how to solve that problem and it just makes them happy. They're just curious about it and they love it. And I was not always that way. I used to get frustrated. I just wanted things to be easier, but it is something that over time I've gotten a lot better at. And now I treat things a lot more like a puzzle. I like building things because I've just developed that kind of skill over time. So if you're not that way by nature, you're not always thinking about this is a problem to solve. How can I best solve it? Well, don't worry because in just a little bit, we're gonna talk about how to develop this as a skill. Something that's very important when solving problems is connecting it back to something that actually matters for the business. And you always need to be asking why. Why, what, when, where, those W questions. These questions actually make a big difference. Why are we actually trying to solve this problem? Where is the data? Where is the issue? Where is the code? These are questions that as you're digging in, you need to be asking yourself and probably asking the person who ever owns this project or whoever owns this data or whatever it is, you're asking them too. You're saying, okay, I know you're requesting that of me. Why am I actually doing this? They may explain it to you and you know it kind of sounds logical, but that's when you need to start breaking it down even more. Okay, I understand what you said, but why do we have to do it this way? Why do we need to sit it here? Why is this connected to this other project? Because the more you know, the better you're gonna be able to solve it. Something that's really important in problem solving in general is understanding when you just can't solve it at all. And this is just kind of a caveat to what we're gonna be talking about in the next slide, which is kind of that problem solving life cycle. There are times where you just can't solve it with the data given. And this has happened to me in the past where, you know, someone will come to me and they're like, hey, here's what we need, let's, you know, let's figure that out. And I'll jump right into the data and I'm trying to solve it and I'll spend a week on it. And then I realize I'm like, we just don't have the data. This is probably something I should have been talking about or asking in the first place. But as I dug into it, we just didn't have what we actually needed. So we needed to go back to the drawing board, see if we could solve it in a different way, see if we needed to start collecting new data. And then we were able to solve that problem further down the line. But with what we currently had, we weren't able to solve it at all. I think personally, a lot of this just comes with experience. I was not born this way. And so when I first got into my first data role, I didn't really know what to ask. I didn't think in an analytical way, but as you get into it, as you start talking to people with more experience, learning from a mentor, learning from other people you're working with, you can develop this and you kind of see how they interact, how they're asking questions, what kind of questions they're asking, and you can learn from them. I think learning from experience and learning from mentors for this specific skill is very, very relevant. Now let's take a look at the problem solving life cycle. Now, typically what happens, and this happens to a lot of beginners, but it happens to experienced people sometimes as well, is you'll go to number one and you'll usually skip all the way to about number five. That means someone comes to you with a request, you're like, okay, I've defined the problem, here's the request, and you jump right to number five of conducting the analysis and then getting your findings and providing a recommendation like as quick as possible. This has happened to me many times as well. But number two, three, and four 
are actually a really important part of the process. So let's look at number one, which is define the problem. This is the very first step. You're getting some type of request. They are asking you to do something. You need to actually know what you're doing. So you're just defining the problem. This is when those W questions are really important. Why, when, where, how, who, who has this data? Why are we doing this? Why do we need to be doing this if we have this other product? You're kind of digging in and asking these difficult questions that you know they may or may not know the answers to, but asking these questions can prompt a lot of things in the business world. Next, you need to structure the problem and prioritize issues, and these kind of can come into play. You have to start identifying the steps that you need to take in order to actually solve this problem. I need to get the data, I need to do this to the data, and then we need to do this. But in that process, there are potentially gonna be other projects that you're working on, other issues that need to be solved. And so when you're thinking about these, you're gonna to need to prioritize the issues. Maybe the biggest issue is you actually have to get access to the data. And that is one of the first things you need to do, but maybe it's visualizing the data. But if that's the biggest issue, you need to tackle that first. But maybe there's another issue. Maybe you need to get approval from someone. Maybe you need to get a budget approved. Maybe you need to hire somebody for this you know, large issue that you're trying to solve. Then that is the biggest issue. You have to prioritize those things, which makes sure that you get this problem solved as quickly and as strategically as possible. Now, the next one is to develop issue analysis. And this sounds very fancy, but really all it means is you're breaking things down into smaller chunks. It can be very difficult to kind of look at a problem in its whole, but when you start breaking it down into smaller chunks, into more bite-sized issues, right? Larger issues tend to have smaller issues within them. You can then go problem by problem and you can solve those and then solve the entire thing, but in just a more manageable way. Step number five is probably the most exciting piece for most people. This is where your technical skills and your hard skills with all your coding languages and database knowledge comes into play. You start conducting your analysis. But notice that almost half the life cycle was preparing. And there's this really famous quote, I don't know how it goes exactly, but it's basically that if you were given an hour to chop down a tree, you'd spend 50 of those minutes sharpening your ax. Right, that's the preparation of the actual task that's gonna be able to make that task a lot easier. Once you conduct your analysis, and this can be done in a hundred different ways, so I'm not going into all of it, then you have to synthesize and kind of bring together everything that you found. And that can be very difficult because sometimes these problems are big and there's a lot of information in a lot of different places. But you have to aggregate all these things, kind of take a look at the bigger picture, look back and see what problem you were trying to solve because sometimes you kind of get off track look back and say, this is what we were trying to solve. Here's what I found on this problem. Lastly, you're gonna develop recommendations. And this could be actually creating a dashboard or creating a report, or it could be an actual recommendation where you're saying, hey, here's what I found. Here's what I recommend for the business or for the team or for your client. The interesting thing about this is that it is cyclical. It means it's gonna keep happening. And there are times where I've worked on a project and you know these things happen where you get done and then there's more questions and more problems and more things. And the cycle just keeps going. So it doesn't always end. Sometimes this life cycle happens once, you're done with that project and you don't have to go back to the drawing board. But sometimes other issues pop up, other things happen, and then you have to restart this cycle all over again. Slowing down following this life cycle will save you a lot of time. There have been times in my career where I've jumped right to number five and it ended up costing me a lot of time that just wasn't needed. Sometimes I didn't even need to do that project or solve that problem. It was already solved somewhere else. I just didn't ask the right questions. I didn't really know what I was doing. And so take it from you know eight years ago, Alex, this really does work. I really hope that this was helpful to someone out there. If you wanna dive even more into soft skills for data professionals, I have a full course on my platform, analystbuilder.com. I will leave a link in the description if you wanna check it out. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.